On today's review, we're going to talk about the new Pioneer ABH 201 ES. So stay tuned. So new for 2018, Pioneer has gone ahead and come out with a whole new numbering strategy. Yes. Which is only natural. That's, that's just what they do every year. We've been rocking the 190, the 290, the 280, the 290, and now we have the 200 series. I'm assuming that was because there was a 90 after nine yes. rotates back to zero. So now we're at the 200s. They make two versions of this radio. They make the AVH 200 EX and they make the 201 EX. The difference between the two is the 201 or any of the AVH radios that has a one in the model number means it's a limited distribution model. You can only get it at authorized Pioneer retailers. They usually also throw in some perks. So for example, the difference between a 200 and a 201 is the 201 comes with the handheld remote control for the exact same price. Just something to think about when you're getting ready to purchase one of these. Let's go ahead, get this thing out of the box, and start talking to you about what's new this year on the 201EX. In the box we get a blue bagged Bluetooth microphone. We get one five foot USB extension, power plug. This is the exact same power plug they've been using for the last four generations, I believe. So you're good. Bag of screws, both kinds, as well as the remote control we just talked about. Now you get a little bit of paperwork, you get a warranty card, you get the quick start guide, and you get the basic installation manual. What they're not providing you with this year is the actual user's manual. If you'd like the user's manual, you have to go to pioneerelectronics.com and download the manual there. Now let's go ahead, we're gonna get this thing set up and we're gonna show you the back of the radio and talk about the features that it has on the back. We have the one USB input. It's a five volt, one amp USB 2. The backup camera input, a video output right here. Now keep in mind, one is brown, one is yellow. The yellow is the video, the brown is the backup camera. Next to that, we have the aux input. Now this is a full audio video aux input. Then we now, new for this model, is six channel RCA output. It's a two volt output, but it's six channel, unlike its predecessor that only had Four. We have front on top, rear in the middle, subwoofer on the bottom. Divided by the heat sink, we have the power plug, the FM antenna, the steering wheel control input, as well as the Bluetooth microphone input above it. Now these two are two different sizes, however, the steering wheel control and the auxiliary are both the same size. They've gone ahead and separated them out to make it a little bit easier to not mistakenly put one into the other. And that's the back of the radio. We're gonna flip it around and start talking about the good stuff. When the unit first powers up, you notice you have five languages to choose from. English, Spanish, Portuguese, French, and Chinese. Select one and click the arrow. You'll come to your main homepage. Let's go ahead and talk about the buttons as well as the display. First things first, this is a 6.2 inch clear resistive WVGA LED backlit 800 by 480 LCD display. Control wise, you have the eject button, your CD DVD slot here across the top, volume up, volume down, a mute option for your volume, the home button, the home button also doubles as a power button if you press and hold, display off, Display off allows you to still make and receive Bluetooth calls, listen to music, and do everything you normally would. Just for nighttime driving to ease the eyes, you can actually turn the display off. Touch the screen to make it come back on. Track up, track down. Now let's go ahead and take a look at some of the built-in features. Select gears, select art palette, select background. New this year are two different backgrounds. So you have the background you're just looking at, plus this background here. You can select illumination, and now you have five colors for your LEDs across the side. You can go in and pick a specific color if you like, as well as just put it on scrolling. Themes are also new this year. You have five themes to choose from. Blue like you see, red, 
orange, green, and white. Now I will tell you, you can't import your own picture on this. This unit doesn't have that feature. Now a couple other features about the radio is it does have 50 watts by four of power, and that translates out to be 14 watts by four of actual power. To set the clock, simply touch the time, select month, select date, select year, select hour. Hour is set on a 24 hour time schedule. So as you'll see, it says 16. Down here, you can choose between 12 or 24 as far as the display goes. When you select X, it'll go ahead and call it four o'clock. Since we're in the menu, let's go ahead and talk about some system settings you might want to adjust. First one would be aux input. If you're not gonna be using the aux input, you can go ahead and turn it off, and that'll remove it from your source drop-down menu, which we'll take a look at later. Next is camera settings. This is where the backup camera settings are located. When you connect a backup camera to this via the purple white wire, it's not gonna automatically know that you've hooked a camera up. You do have to go into the camera settings and turn it on. To do that, select the back camera input, touch it until it says on. By default, it will be set to battery, which is 99.9% .9 of the vehicles you will be installing this in. System language, you can adjust that if for some reason it's not set to the language you wanted to use out of the box. Restore settings. Restore settings is a great feature that allows you to bomb the radio back to out of the box settings in case you've managed to goof it up or it's not working properly. In order to do that though, you must have the light green brake wire engaged. Otherwise, this feature will be grayed out. Beep tone. If you don't like the thing beeping every time you press a button, you can turn that on and off here. If the touch panel has gone kind of strange, touch panel calibration is located here. If you want it to dim differently than the factory settings allow, you can go here and adjust that. So right off the bat, this unit is a substantial upgrade from its predecessor, the 290, 190, 280, 180. This has a lot more features, especially like with the display. Yes. You know, now you have five colors to choose from. Mm -hmm. It's really handy. Those features alone definitely make this radio a lot more appealing than the predecessors. Correct. But. That's not what you guys want to hear about. You guys want to hear about sources and capabilities as well as audio and fun stuff like that. So let's go ahead and take a look at the audio sources that are built into this radio. So Pioneer has gone ahead and redesigned the whole operating system on these radios from the ground up. It's totally new and it works a lot more like their higher end units that Pioneer makes. Hit the home button. You actually have a home that you can go to now and you can see all the sources that are available to you. If you'd like to view your camera, simply tap on camera. If there was a camera attached to this, you would be viewing it right now. You can choose to do quick view, which allows you to go back to your source and adjust things. 10 seconds after you're done touching the screen, it'll automatically go back to the camera view. If you don't want to have the backup camera on anymore, simply select the X and that'll return you back to whatever source you are on. If you hit the drop down menu, you have a full list of your sources easily to get at. They've added power off as well as source off like their bigger brothers. The difference between the two is source off is like you see now with the background image on, you can still make and receive Bluetooth calls. Power off is like holding the menu button, it actually shuts the radio down as if you were taking the keys out of the ignition. First source up of course is radio. This guy has 18 FM, 6 AM presets with RDS tuning. RDS is that cool text across the screen. To get to your preset, select the arrow, and they're located right here. Tap the FM to go through FM 1, 2, and 3, as well as AM. Next up is gonna be your aux input. Aux is gonna bring you up to an OK screen. To access into the aux screen, you have to have the light green emergency brake wire engaged. Now, once engaged, we'll go to a black screen. But like we said, it is an AV input. If you did want to add some form of a video source to it, you can do that. But if you're just going to be listening to aux off your phone, this is what you're going to stare at. Tap the screen. You can access your drop-down menu. Bluetooth audio. Now, this unit has a brand new Bluetooth circuit built into it that is 100% better than its predecessor. You have two things you can do. You have Bluetooth audio. Then you have Bluetooth phone, and they're totally different from one another. Let's talk about Bluetooth audio first. So once paired to a phone, you'll have the information that is stored on the phone as far as title, artist, album. You can come over here and select the three lines. It'll bring you to the root folder 
In this case, select music, playlists, and here are your playlists. Scroll down using the arrows. And it'll go ahead and play your music. Below the three lines is this guy right here. What this has is the ability to have two phones paired to the Bluetooth audio section at the same time. If you go ahead and select the other phone, it's gonna take a minute or two. It's gonna go ahead and switch over the Bluetooth audio to that phone. Once switched, the next phone will go ahead and start playing. You can tap the three lines on that one. It's searched the same way you did on the previous phone. What's unique about this is that even though you're switching the Bluetooth audio, you're not affecting the phone. Select Bluetooth phone. In this case, it was hooked up to Nando's. We'll hit the gear, we'll come to connection, and we'll change it to Mr. White. Now it does take a few moments for it to switch from one phone to the next. As you can see, it's blinking here, it's switching, it's reconnecting, and it's downloading the phone library every time it switches. So if you have a huge phone library and you're switching between multiple phones, this could take a little while. While that's doing that, we'll go back over here to Bluetooth Audio and you'll notice we're still playing Nando's phone. So even though our calls have switched over to Mr. White, it's still playing music from Nando's phone. If Nando's phone gets a phone call, it will not auto switch to his phone. He'll still have to use his phone to make the phone call. Next, camera view. Like we talked about in the main menu, there's also an access to camera view here. So that's two ways to access the camera. Select X and it'll close it out. It works identically the same way as if you were to select it through the source menu. Other things located around the screen are the EQ. Tap the EQ and new this year, you have a 13 band EQ with five presets and two customizations. That'll just take you to the EQ. If you actually wanna to get to the audio section, select gears, select the radiating speaker, and now you're in the actual audio section. Now this unit is jam-packed full of audio features that the predecessor did not have. As we just saw, the 13-band EQ is totally new. Previously, this just had a five-band EQ. Balance and fader, still pretty straightforward there. Source level adjust. Source level adjust is a feature that allows you to adjust the source level you're listening to's volume up or down. So in this case, we're listening to Bluetooth audio. If the phone was really quiet compared to FM, we can come in here and turn that up so that they all play at the same level. Subwoofer, you can turn the subwoofer on and off. Speaker level, it has independent five channel speaker level control. And the reason why it has that is because this unit also has time correction. You can simply select where you'd like to set and it'll give you a generic setting for your volume control. You have front left, front right, front all, and everyone in the car. And then it'll cycle back through to off. Tap down, crossovers. This has a much bigger crossover. So hit HPF on, and that's gonna be the high pass on. This has one high pass on. So what that allows you to do is when you turn it on, it will turn on the front and the rear at the same time. Now you can select the frequency you'd like simply by tapping the arrows here. And then you can come over to this side and you can select the slope. This has a 6, 12, or 18 dB crossover slope as well as 25, 31.5, 40, 50, 63, 80, 100, 125, 160, 200, 250 crossover points for all bands. Tap through here to adjust whether you want subwoofer, front, or rear. When on subwoofer, we have the ability to switch the phase from zero to 180 degrees. Now if we come back to speaker level, over here you have your subwoofer volume control. You can turn it up or down on this page here. It goes minus 25 and plus 10. Subwoofer settings is a fast key to the subwoofer crossover. Listening position is a, another way to choose the same thing we did on speaker level control. It's just a one-way ticket to that. Time alignment. And this is the reason why we have independent level control in the car is that this unit now has time alignment. Unlike its bigger brothers though, it does not have auto time alignment. You physically have to enter in the distances 
using a tape measure. And you can do that simply by tapping the up or down. Bass boost, this has plus six on bass boost. What bass boost is designed for is if you have music that has a really low or dry bass sound and you'd like to make the bass boomier, you can use bass boost for that. Keep in mind though, it's not just for the subwoofer output. It will affect all the speakers on the radio. You have the ability to turn the rear speakers off when the radio is in standby mode. And then you have loudness control, which is a low, mid, or high loudness control. All right, so there you go. That's the new 201 EX. It's got a ton more features. Yes. The EQ is, is definitely improved. You finally get some color selection. Yeah. Not bad. It's definitely feature packed for the price point that it's at. And with that, we're gonna go ahead and end the show. Fernando, if you please. All right, if you like this video, please subscribe, share, like. You know where you find us. Facebook, Instagram, YouTube, and also in Twitter. You guys have a great night as always, and we will see you later next time. Bye. Bye.